Hi, Yana. Come on in. Would you mind telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure, sure. So I am founder CEO of a company called Craftful. So if you have played with chat GPT lately, like millions of people have, um, we're very similar to chat GPT, but for product research. Do you want to check out my office? Yes, that would be great. Yeah, come on in. So I see you have a lot of art in here. Is some of that AI generated? Yeah, so I actually do a lot of painting myself. So a lot of it is just my art. And, and then some of it is what I call Yana AI collaboration, <laughs> like this one here. So it is, it is AI generated art. <laughs> So what is it like to build with generative AI? Super exciting. Uh, it's so much change all the time. How do you deal with that? So you really have to iterate on your product rapidly and also stay up to date with, with all the most recent changes. But I think it's all really worth it when you get to see product managers use the product and be really excited about the magic that comes with generative AI. And how'd you come to work on generative AI? So mostly I, I focused on this, this problem space, right? Uh, it is a problem that I've personally experienced as a product manager before starting Craftful. I was a PM um, and, and later a head of product at different, different companies. And um, I've always uh, tried to figure out how I can leverage all the different user feedback that I'm getting from different channels. And, uh, and leverage that in my product work. So it's, so it's a really a problem that, that I've had myself uh, and, and wanted to, to solve over the years. So what made you apply generative AI to this problem? Right, so I think when I first started um, using generative AI, this is really the, the first problem that, that came to mind for me because it is a big pain point that I've experienced. But um, I think Back then, generative AI actually wasn't great at summarization. It was, it was much better at uh, text generation. Uh, but I've, I've tried um, applying it to this problem in, in the past few years. And then when it did get really good, that's when I decided to build a solution uh, with, 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 this, uh, with this, for this particular problem. That's very cool. Would you mind if we got a little tour of your house? Sure, yeah. I would love to show you my favorite part of the house. Come on in. This is actually where I get my best thinking done. I really like the light here. <laughs> yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful space. So Craftful is a fully remote company. Can you talk a little bit about how you foster better collaboration in a remote environment? Yeah, I actually think that um, remote uh, environment lends itself really well for collaboration and, and really primarily productivity, right? Because you're not commuting to the office, you're not being interrupted all the time uh, with with um, questions or or anything that you're you're not interested in at the moment. Um, I also think that you can be much more flexible, right? Like folks can go and pick up their kids or take a nap when they're not be feeling productive without having to feel like they need to explain themselves or that they may be judged. Um, and I think that's flexibility really makes people much more productive because ultimately they're now focused on the impact that they're having instead of um, just proving to people that they're doing work or that kind of like um, uh, butts and seats mentality, right? And how do you make sure everyone feels connected without the water cooler style small talk that you have with in-person collaboration? Right, so I think uh, bonding is much more complicated in, in remote environments. So you do have to be very conscious in terms of how you create opportunities for your team to bond and connect. So what do you do to bond and connect as a team at Craftful? We do lots of things. So one thing we do is actually spend some time in person. So we get together on a quarterly basis for our team offsites in different locations um, every time. And we have some fun together. Um, but we also do things more on a daily basis or, or more on a weekly basis. Every Friday we post uh, things that we've generated with AI, usually things like poems or, or songs or, um, or, or jokes or uh, paintings. 
um, and then we we have fun together uh, looking at all of that or we share the music that we're uh, currently listening to uh, we also do things like you know when we have um, something to celebrate we will order food for everyone or order cake and then we get on a video call and and do a bit of celebration we've tried different different things um, over over the years and um, I think it's mostly been great would you like me to show you more of the house yes please thank you let's do it so actually not moving far here's my gym <laughs> so I use my tonal to get um, all of my exercise here at home I used to hate strength training but since I started using this I really really enjoy it and I feel so much better um, let's let's go further in pivoting topics a little bit I want to hear your secrets for better product research. Mm. So I think, you know, over the years, uh, before becoming a founder, I've been a B2B PM, I've been a B2C PM, I've been a B2B to C PM. So I've done lots of different types of product research and it's always slightly different in those different contexts. I would say the one thing that applies across the board to any kind of product research that I've done is to really focus on not trying to aim for a lab-like environment and leverage every opportunity to get feedback from users in in the product research. So if, if I have the opportunity to jump on a sales call and join the sales team, I will. If I can listen to or uh, read support tickets, I will do that. If I can go and read app store reviews, I will do that. So just really trying to get feedback from as many channels as possible. Just, you know, search for the brand name on Twitter. <laughs> Whatever, whatever you can. Doesn't it get overwhelming if you try to learn from all of these different channels? Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's exactly the problem we're solving at Grapple. Um, so we do uh, use AI to summarize user feedback from all of those different sources so that PMs can use those insights in, in prioritization. And in fact, uh, this quarter, we're uh, going to launch a integration with product board so that PMs can import the insights that they get in Craftful and then prioritize them in their roadmap and product board. So that's really exciting. I would have loved to have that as, as PM. Amazing. Sounds like there's a lot of exciting collaboration between us in the future. Yes. Would you like to get some water? Yes, please. Thank you. At Craftful, your target audience is product managers, just like us over here at Product Board. So can you tell us a little bit about what it's like building for product managers for you and how you empathize with them? Sure. So obviously for me, it's very easy to empathize with, with product managers, just having been a product manager myself. Uh, but I do think that there's lots of opportunity to learn from product managers, specifically because product managers are so willing to share kind of their experiences and, and their pain points. Sometimes I'll just go on Twitter and ask a question like, you know, product managers, what are you reading? Or product managers, what type of interview questions do you like? And uh, get hundreds of uh, PMs um, sharing sharing their experiences. And that's been really powerful. Well, that's amazing that they're so willing to share. Why do you think that is? I think it's a culture of learning, right? Like as a PM, you're never done learning. There's a lot of, um, a lot of things that just change over, over time. And so, PMs are constantly learning new things and then they know that everyone around them are also learning new things. And so they're much more willing to talk about what they've already learned and what they're still learning. And it looks really beautiful outside. It's been raining for the past few weeks and it's sunny. Do you think we could go outside to yeah. that nice seating area? Yeah, let's do it. So switching topics a little bit, I know you're really engaged in product communities in San Francisco and beyond. And I actually first found you uh, through the SF Women in Product Medium. Awesome. Could, could you tell me a little bit about um, how you got engaged in leading the SF Women in Product chapter? Sure, yeah. Um, I think um, getting more women into product is something that I'm, I'm really passionate about. There's not a whole lot of women in product. And so um, I think you know, women will continue being underserved for as long as they're surrounded by products that are primarily built or led by by men. And so that's something I'm really excited about. And on the same vein, how do you feel about 
the gender gap in entrepreneurship as an entrepreneur yourself? Yeah. Um, so obviously, similarly, something I feel really passionate about um, as a Y Combinator alumni, I've been referring female uh, founders to apply for Y Combinator over the years. I've actually referred more than 100 uh, female founders to, to YC. Um, but also uh, last year, I, together with a, a couple of founder friends, started a community called VC Back Moms. And we're now over 200 PMs in this really active Slack channel. And it's, you know, um, folks who've uh, raised collectively billions of dollars and created thousands of jobs and more importantly, built lots and lots of amazing products. And a lot of those products specifically serve women, right? Like things like egg freezing or uh, pregnancy or postpartum. Um, and it's it's really exciting because ultimately that's more than 50% of the population. So, you know, we're talking big markets. Um, and I just engaging in that community uh, makes me feel like the future is really bright. Yes. So I want to end with some rapid fire questions. So what is your favorite product and why? My favorite product is probably the tonal. Um, I do love the fact that I can exercise at home on demand whenever I want to. It's really engaging. It's gotten me much fitter than I was before I started using it. I'm going to have to try that one out. So you're originally from Sweden. What do you miss the most about it now that you're in the Bay Area? Oh, the summers. Uh, really nothing like that, like bottled up energy that you get from people just waiting for the sun to come out for many months. And then and then the fact that it's the days are so much longer during the summer. So it's just there's nothing like that. And what is your favorite place to travel to? Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, I love the combination of just the beautiful beaches there, um, amazing Japanese food and that lead back Hawaiian culture. I think it's the best. I think I should retire there. <laughs> I agree. And last but not least, if you weren't a product person and founder, what would you be? Probably be an artist. Um, right now, I mostly just paint for myself. But if I weren't building products, I would probably be painting more. <laughs> all right. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us, Yana. It was great to see you and chat more with you. This is great. Thanks so much for coming over. I really enjoyed chatting with you guys. Right, bye. Bye.